Hello and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV and it is time for All Saints Wake 2024. Okay, so that we can actually purchase from this vendor. So I picked up a couple of lawyers. That's a huge though. Don't really know where I'd put it. Um, I'd also need to sort out the housing. The FC house is very much cluttered. I need to sort that out. Just getting a chance to uh, get that done. So let's go. Let's talk to uh, our pumpkin-headed apparition friend here. A for starve, Araman. <laughs> it's been more than a few moons since last we met, friend. As it so happens, I have a proposition suited to your talents. Are you prepared to throw caution to the wind? and consort with the fiends most foul once again. Of course you are. But before we get to the heart of the matter, let us reflect upon the history of All Saints Wake. On this night, do foul fiends emerge to cavort and careen, unconcerned with the judgments of those on high. Flo Whores of the saints' heavenly abode ring with merriment as the wine flows freely and no one can be bothered to look down. Thus did God's fearing folk greet this particular onset with trepidation, daring not to venture forth from their homes no longer. Nay, for adventurers came and drove out the void scent, restoring safety to the city streets and marking the occasion as one of jubilation. That's all well and good, but what of the poor forsaken fiends? Are they too not deserving of revelry? My wish is to see All Saints Wake reborn as a celebration for all, be they ghost, ghoul, Gridanian, or otherwise. And how do I propose to accomplish this feat? Binding obligations, friend. I've convinced the more sinister sorts to entertain into contracts. Uh, to enter, not entertain. Enter into contracts which forbid them from um, preying on mortals. In exchange, they are permitted to partake in festivities. But there's one troubled soul who still seems incapable of getting into the spirit of things. Perhaps you'd be willing to give them a helping hand. Nothing too devilishly difficult, I promise. Before you get started, you'll want to get a grasp of particulars by speaking with Papa Gruff. He ought to be performing one of his shows by the entrance of the Great Loam Growery. Now go. I shall be watching your performance with great interest. <laughs> Ah, here's Popper Gruff. Oh, he's gathered an audience. Although it pains me so, our humble performance must draw to a close. Let us then end things on a high note. Ladies and gentlemen, I bid you feast your eyes on the fantastic Philcox and his transformation magics. Oh, that didn't seem to work. What was that all about? The clowning and whatnot was a right laugh, but the last bit was bleeding rubbish. Go on, let's get out of here.
Oh. Once more you fail to muster up even an ounce of magical prowess. I had the crowd in the palm of my hand. We'd have been the toast of the town, if not for your blunder. There, there you go again, shrieking the same old tune. I've had up to my eyeball with this farce. Just because you know a few cheap tricks doesn't give you the right to treat me like that. I can't stand the sight of you, let alone the thought of taking to the stage of you again. Good riddance. Well, well, fate has conspired for us to cross paths once again. Out with it, then. I know you're not here to swap pleasantries. Foul fiend, failing to get to the spirit of all saints' wake. I wager you speak of Philcox, the fellow who stormed off in half. Like Minus of Ilk, Philcox and I have an insatiable appetite for ether. But unlike your garden variety void scent, who hunt hapless mortals like beasts, we prefer to sate our hunger with their enthusiastic approval. I tell you, there's no ether as delectable as you'll find in food gifted in genuine appreciation. Which sent me to thinking, perhaps praying on mortals was an old fashioned and misguided approach. Thus, did I commit to giving folk the sort of frights that dazzle and delight, winning hearts and minds, and in the process, no small number of ether laden delicacies. What better occasion for such terrifying amusement as All Saints Wake? The method is catching, too. Many voices now see Kiefer in this manner. Phil Cox is one such reformed individual. When I first laid eyes upon him, I sensed promise. But get him in front of a crowd and you're lucky to get a smattering of half-hearted applause. Let alone a few measly crumbs. You'd be better off hearing it from Araman's mouth, though. You can't have gotten far. That sniveling whelp of an imp. Magic's this and magic's that. Sheer unbridled cheek of it. Philcox is practically frothing in the mouth. So incensed is he by his treatment at the hands of Papagroff, he must soothe him for attempting to start a conversation. Apologies, I take a leave of my senses. Your timely intervention is much appreciated. Wait, by the look of you I'd say you're an adventurer. Let me guess, that pumpkin-headed lady sent you to check up on me, did she? I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell me your tale. No, for me to tell you my tale. Try as I might, I just can't get the hang of transformation magics. I have all the means to delight the crowds. You're starved for appreciation. I'm an Araman. Paralyzing prey with this big eye of mine? Not a problem. Turn them into stone with a petrifying glare? A trifling task. Hells, I can even smell despair and all manner of negative emotions in the people around me. Obviously, paralysis and petrification 
won't win over an audience, and my metaphorical nose for despair isn't going to put Aether on the table either. I ought to just tell that pumpkin-headed lady I'm not cut out for this business. If you are here at her behest, you'd better come to. Okay, well, the pumpkin headed apparition needs to uh, change his mind. <laughs> I gather you had a hand in Philcock's decision to lay bare his thoughts and feelings. Are they did any good? So stuck at square one, underappreciated and underfed. <laughs> Such a curious child. Are you truly so blind to your own potential? No doubt you have an inkling as to what I speak of. Bray, share your wisdom with Phil Cox. You can smell dark emotions. Use your gift to help those in need. Hmm. Well, you'd be hard pressed to find a voice and you'd suggest that. I don't see how helping others helps me. But then again, I know a little of mortal ways, so perhaps I should heed your advice. Oh wait, I see the logic in now. What better way to make use of my talents and knock people, oh wait, and knock that pompous papagraph right off his pedestal. No, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, I have no idea where to start. <laughs> Perhaps I can lend a hand with a little sleight of hand. Hold still. Not only is that get up guaranteed to turn heads, each and every thread is imbued with a potent magic to aid in your newfound purpose. Oh, you know, I think I can feel it. Maybe this isn't going to be so tough after all. There you are. Hmm. You know, I had thought to apologize for my harsh words earlier. Since our act was my initiative, and therefore our success, or lack thereof, was ultimately my responsibility. But I sense that you've been scheming. <laughs> it pleases me to inform you, Papa Graf, that I found a way to win over mortals on my own terms. I find that hard to believe, but since you seem so confident, why don't we have ourselves a contest? Whoever garners the most affection, and thereby the largest share of Aether, uh, Aether rich victuals, wins. And to the victor goes the spoils of subservience. The loser will be bound to obey the every whim. How does that sound? You're on. I'd be ready to bow and scream. Oh, she doesn't care. 
Hmm. That mortal epithet about one's bark being worse than one's bite comes to mind. Prepare yourself, Philcox. I know I've got this marvelous magic out there, but I'm still not entirely convinced I have what it takes to beat Papa Gruff on my own. Come with me. Just until I get the hang of things. That's all I ask. Wait, we need, we're going to help you against Papa Gruff? Very well. I shall leave Philcox in your keeper hands. <laughs> you got to feel mean. I like Papa Gruff now. Should we be going against him like this? Okay, Phil Cox, which we had. All fiends seated on all saints wings. And we get the outfit he's wearing, which is cool, but the fact that the wings are attached, and I'm guessing not toggleable, means you can't just use this in, for an everyday glamour, which would have been cool. You know, a shirt with a tie like this, it'd have been so cool to use. Um, maybe they'll add another one that isn't Halloween themed. How about we try and find a troubled soul in need of aid? Ah, uh, but let's get out of here first. I've already found one. Right. Time to look for folk harboring negative feelings. Give me a moment. Oh yeah, he has to do the searching. I don't know if it has anything to do with that pumpkin-headed lady's enchantment, but my powers feel more potent than ever. I've already found someone, and whoever they are, they're awfully flustered. It's in the northeast, I think. Though I'm not sure where exactly. The roads here can be confusing. Truth be told, this is my first time in the city. I've got a decent sense of direction, but I've yet to grasp the lie, the lie of the land. Could I trouble you to lead the way? Our flustered target is northeast of here. I'll be right behind you. So Phil Crooks is now accompanying us. Keep her on your side in order to proceed with the quest objectives. Oh, okay. You can leave Phil Crooks behind by entering a different area. Yeah, 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 okay. Yep, okay, we get that. Oh, it's daytime now. Stuff still glows, but does that have quite the same effect? What's this? Ah, such glee. They mentioned a clown. I wager they've just had a, uh, uh, privilege of seeing one of Papa Gruff's performances. Listen, for the first to admit that he's an expert illusionist, and you've only got to look at the folk like these ladies as he knows how to work a crowd. But I won't be upstaged. I'll prove there's more than one way to win over an audience. By following your timely advice, that is. 
given the delight written over their faces, our opponent must have earned himself some sustenance, which means we've no time to lose. Onward. I wonder if their uh, rivalry is going to be an ongoing thing. Moving forward. I love the decorations everywhere. It's so good. Oh gods. Where has she gone to? Ah, this must be the foe my senses were leading me to. Shall we find out what hails him? Oh my god, so bright. You there! What's going on you so worked up? Oh, forgive me. There was this poor little girl who had been separated from her mother. I was helping her to look, but she suddenly disappeared. I can't simply abandon her. But then again, I have an urgent personal matter to attend to and... I don't know what to do. In that case, why don't I and my associate look for the girl? Then, you can see to your affairs without worry. Thank you, thank you! She's a young lass dressed in blue. Hope you're able to find her forthwith. Hmm, he certainly was appreciative. Yeah, here I am, empty handed. Uh, forget the food. We've a lost child to find. Do we have to find her or will we have to look for ourselves? I'm detecting a despairing presence in the east of here. Or well, the girl. Which means I have need of your navigational... Uh, nails? Is that supposed to be nose? Hmm. Once again, after you. I thought this would be a fine opportunity to accrue some appreciation, but the poor girl's beside herself. She keeps going out for her mama. Might I enlist your help? This must be the lost lass we've been looking for. If we want to earn her thanks, we need to uh, reunite her with her mother, wouldn't you say? Which means, now I have a lady to locate. Any suggestions? Yeah. Hopefully she knows her door is missing. So yeah, use your searches and find someone who's uh, feeling anxious. Ah, you're saying the mother will be worried about her daughter having gone missing? Brilliant. That's exactly why I had you accompany me. Right then. Found her. I don't know which is the biggest, bigger boon. Having you by my side? Or well, this fancy finery? I think I've learned the way... Oh, no. I think I've learned my way around the city, more or less. I'll handle this next part on my own. Wait here. I'll be back with the girl's mother in no time. It would be easier to bring the daughter to the mother, but okay. To 
12 be praised. You're safe. You have my eternal gratitude. Thanks for finding Mama, mister. Do you believe me now, Papa Gruff? Sweet, sweet appreciation. No can see of my special talent. Hmm. I can't help but notice they didn't offer you anything edible by way of thanks. For my part, I've already been rewarded with a tasty morsel. That said, the gift of food is far from guaranteed. Indeed, perseverance is key. It is why I find myself performing show after show. I suggest you approach this contents with the same tenacity, Phil Cox. I'm afraid he's right. Constant effort is key. Luckily, I sensed another troubled soul while I was tracking down the girl's mother. I best see what I can do to help. You know, I think I'm ready to go out alone now. Why don't you let our pumpkin headed benefactor know? I'll come and find you when I'm done. Well, I'm afraid my next performance calls. Until we meet again, adventurer. Ah, so we're back again. Hee <laughs> hee This adventure returns. At the precise moment I predicted, I do help keeping Phil Cox company wasn't too taxing. What of our fiend and his endeavours? You have my thanks, truly. Ah, speak of the devils. Here they come. Dear, oh dear. That turned out to be a damn sight harder than I anticipated. And all I have to show for my travels is a single cookie. To think, the first gift I'd receive proved to be the last. Curses. I didn't receive so much as a crumb. I suppose this means you win. Uh, very well. I'm yours to command, Papa Gruff. <laughs> you admit defeat far too readily, Phil Cox. Hooray! We found you! I wanted to thank you properly for helping me and Mama. I brought you a pumpkin cookie. Simply scrumptious! Scrumptious! I'm glad you liked it. Farewell. Well, that makes it one apiece. 
A draw then. Still, Wilcox, while you had some assistance along the way, you've nevertheless done yourself proud. To think I've lived to see the day Papa Gruff sings my praises? Awfully kind of you to finally admit that I might have worth. <laughs> That's all you desire? My begrudging acceptance? Have you forgotten your reasons for joining in the festivities in the first place? Of course I haven't. The good people of Gridania are still in need of my help. And where there are common folk in need, there are cookies to be freed and are uh, given to me. Adventurer, I'd better get going. But before I do, let me say this. I might have found a way to make the most of my talents, but I wouldn't have been able to do so without you and the pumpkin-headed lady. I'm sure we'll run into each other again one of these days. Till then. The promise I sensed in Vilcox when he and I first met wasn't illusory after all. I should take my leave too. It would be remiss of me to allow him to garner all the glory. To say nothing of the cookies. <laughs> I'd say those two fiends ended up having themselves a frightfully fun-filled All Saints Wake. Wouldn't you agree? And for your part in this, a fitting reward. I present to you a set of finery, as worn by Gridanian's most emotionally perceptive armament. You wonder if your outfit is endowed with the same enchantment? You needn't worry. There never was an enchantment. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> that little charade was my way of giving Philcox the confidence he so sorely lacked. Although, I dare say, such a measure was unnecessary, given he had you to cheer him on. Ah, before I forget, you are hereby cordially invited to my humble abode for a get-together of sorts. Do drop by. I assure you, it will be frightfully entertaining. Anyway, your help is much appreciated. At this rate, my vision of all saints wake for mortals and void sent alike might not be such a distant prospect. Though I do hope these shenanigans haven't dulled your enthusiasm for this most occult of occasions. You have access to Sneaky Hollow. Speak to the unusual washer. And me, Miketo's. Well, me, Keto's Amphitheater to be escorted to the costume party. Where you can look like NPCs. Oh, friends in life. Okay, so we have the new outfit, so let's take a good look at it. So we'll start off with the horns. So you can tie both of these, you can tie down here and up there. So you can make any kind of gradient you want, which is pretty cool. And they have a little 
little bit of texture on them, I think. Not sure they look so good with how a hairstyle, but that's kind of cool. They always put them on the front. Why don't we ever get like horns coming out of the side or anything? From the top, I don't know. But then we have the shirt. Which I don't know if you'll be able to see from the compression of YouTube. But this is really nicely textured. Got all the like seam coming down here. And yeah, this is all nicely textured. All the metal lapel. I don't know what you'd call them. A little men metal ornamentation on them. And then you have the tie. Again, you've got like a nice little texture pattern going along it. And you got a little pocket with a metal button on. And then you got a pocket here with like stripes on. Yeah, again, very nice, super nicely textured. And then you have these little clasps on the end so you can roll up your sleeves and keep them that way. And on the back, there's this little purple element going on from the sides. And then you have these little wings, which have a slight gradient on them as well. Nicely textured again. And actually, three dimensional. Only ever so slightly, but they're not just like two-dimensional images you sometimes get sprites whatever you got these little uh, metal reliefs on the on the back you've got like um, creases as well going down very cool so if you dye this the um, you're either dyeing this shirt or you're dyeing these purple parts and so it automatically has a gradient built in which works better on some colors than others honestly you have the gloves these little metal studs going on which is pretty cool yeah i'm always looking for these kind of um kind of like sleeve things are going down i would have preferred if it went up a bit more but then you didn't feel the shirt so i understand why they've done that it's got these little metal rivets and buttons on. And then you've got these nails included, which is cool. You've got like these little... Like gems or something attached. So again, if you dye this, you're either dyeing this uh, wrist piece, or you're dyeing the nails. And so the nails automatically have a gradient attached. And you're actually dyeing the nails, you're not dyeing the gems or anything. I don't think they change at all. And then we go the, the pants. So a very nicely detailed belt. You know, little seams going down from this. From this little um See that'd be like the fastener, but I'm not very really sure why that would be there. Because you have these loops. These loops are um they're nice, but they're not like detailed like this is, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. But then you've got the actual buckle. It's very nicely detailed, and then the little, I don't know what part of that, you call it, part of that buckle. Goes through. And attached to it, you've got these chains. Which is cool, I like that. And there's a zipper on the side and pockets. And a nice detail of the like all the creases going on and seams. This is very cool. So if you dye this, you're either dyeing the pants or you're dyeing the belt. And the actual belt. I don't think it dyes any of the metal work. And the chains don't get affected at all. So yeah, interesting. I think I think the pants could be used for many things. And I think the gloves can. The shirt the problem is the wings. So if you don't want the wings, you're kind of stuffed. 
It's kind of limits the shirt. Otherwise, the shirt's fantastic. And then you got the boots. I think the boots are really cool. You got like a, a zipper fastener here. It goes down. So it looks like the laces here are just ornamental. Ornamental. Just as for aesthetic purposes, because you actually fasten up the boots with the zip. Cool little Mel motif on the back. Nice thick um, sole. I think these boots are really cool. But if you dye them, you're either dyeing the boot. Uh, yeah, I think it's the boot part. And if, or it's the sole and the, um, the, the front piece. But yeah, overall, I really like this. This is a very cool outfit. And yeah, I think I'll end up using the pants quite a lot. Maybe the boots too. Because they're very cool. And maybe the shirt occasionally. But I think it only looks good purple, personally. Or if you like... You could use metallic things, which... Uh, metallic paints uh, dyes, which work really good on it. So I could see that being used. I think, yeah, they've definitely given you the, well, the best colours for it. Well, yeah, off the bat. But yeah, looks good. So I think this was a nice little reward for, um, All Saints Wake. Okay, for, thank you for watching this. And this is it for All Saints Wake 2024. We had some cool rewards, a nice little sweet little quest line as we usually get with the events. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this too. And I look forward to seeing what glamorous people make with this, with these pieces. And yeah. Bye for now.